I have a Game Boy Macro here, but not just any Game Boy Macro, someone has put in quite a lot of work with this, but it is faulty. So according to the eBay listing, the microphone does not work with this, but everything else should work. So let's take a closer look at the modifications they have done. As you can see, they have filled many of the holes that aren't actually used in the Game Boy Macro. So let's give this a quick test and it seems like everything else is working apart from what they've said which is the microphone. So let's get this open so we can take a look. And to do that we can start by unscrewing the battery cover, removing the battery cover and then removing the battery itself. From there we can then use our Phillips screwdriver and remove all the Phillips screws from the rear of the case. With those removed, we can now start prying open the back of the case. It is on there quite tight. A little prying tool help us do this. And I was not expecting that when I lifted it up, to be fair. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. As you can see, someone has put in their own LEDs and wired this up. And they have put the speaker here with some wires going uh, God knows where. And come to think of it, the microphone is not attached. So why am I fixing this? It's a Game Boy Macro. It doesn't need a microphone. Why was this sold as faulty? I guess that's it. End of the video. It's been repaired. As you've probably seen from the thumbnail and title, this isn't the only thing we'll be doing to this Game Boy Macro. I'll be using a boxy pixel aluminium or aluminium machined shell. It's not quite a shell, it's actually in the front half. So for the second part of the shell, I'm going to use a brand new clear DS Lite case. And to start with this conversion, let's see what these LEDs are doing and get this macro into shape. So looking at these wires, I can see that there's some exposed wire, which is kind of a big no-no. Looks like there's no screws holding this DS Lite board in place, so I'm going to carefully pull it apart from the shell. Making sure to take the screen with it, and this we could just put to one side. Flipping the board over, let's remove the screen before we risk doing any damage to it. To do that, I'm gonna lift up the locking tab, and then I'm gonna just pull out the screen. So it looks like these wires are just connected directly onto the original LED, and I won't be needing these so I'm just going to chop it off because it's easier. I'm then going to remove the Wi-Fi board which is stuck on quite well and I'm going to disconnect the digitizer for the touch screen and now the screen is fully detached. For the Game Boy Macro it does require me taking off this digitizer but this screen actually works so I have an alternative screen that I've taken from elsewhere that the digitizer is clearly broken so I'd rather use this. If you are enjoying this video so far don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. So I've used a blade to pry this open and I've taken off the digitizer. Now I'm going to clean up the sticky residue left with some IPA. With that cleaned, this screen is now ready to go back in the Game Boy Macro. But there is more work to be done. So taking a look at this DS Lite board, there is a lot of wires we need to remove. I'm going to add some flux to these LEDs and I'm going to remove all these old wires with my solder and iron. These are definitely not needed and hopefully the LEDs are not damaged in any way. I'm also going to disconnect this speaker wire and then feed it back through to the other side of the board. While I'm here, I'm actually going to touch up the 330 ohm resistor because it's not making the best connection. With that touched up, the next thing we're moving on to is removing the last speaker wire cable. With that removed, I was expecting the speaker to fall off, but no, it turns out it has been hot melt glued into place. Yikes, I don't really like that myself, so I'm going to apply some IPA and try to carefully lift it off without doing any damage to the board. And it seems to pry off with a reasonable amount of force. I'm going to apply some more IPA and take off the remaining glue off the board itself. Now that I have the board in this state, I'm going to use some IPA to clean off some in. I'm also going to use it to clean connectors like the volume and power and the charging port itself and I'll also give the button contacts a nice clean of IPA. Now that's done this is pretty much ready to start the macro process so I need to prepare a Nintendo Switch speaker because it comes with a connector so I'm going to chop off that connector I'm then going to use my flush cutters to expose the wire so that we can solder this onto the board. 
as you can see this resistor in place is to mimic the top screen so that the Game Boy Micro will turn on. For the speaker we could either use speaker L or speaker R which is the left and right channel. In this case because there was already a wire previously and there's some solder on the speaker right I'm going to use that for my speaker but either should be fine. And then connecting up the black wire to the V ground by the charging port. With that in place, I'm going to remove the P3 connector with some flush cutters. And then once that is done, let's move on to attaching the LCD screen back into place. To do this, just going to lift up the locking tab and then insert the screen. Making sure it is fully inserted before relocking. Moving over to the shell itself, this is a great opportunity to clean up all the contacts and the buttons. So let's take these all out of the old shell and we can throw this away since I won't be using it anymore. These rubbers and buttons are surprisingly clean but let's still give them a once over. Now that they are clean we can use them in our new shell so let's go grab that now. And here it is the boxy pixel shell and it does look really good. Well worth my money that's for sure. So let's put in all these cleaned buttons. I'm going to guide the screen into place first, followed by the PCB, and then while having that lifted, insert the speaker and push it all down. With that all pushed down, we can put in the two Phillips screws to hold the board into place. Once those are down, we can now start to reattach the left and right trigger buttons, making sure to put the spring into place and checking that it functions fine before moving on. Some patience is definitely needed for these springs, they don't always go in first time. And not forgetting the Wi-Fi board has to be connected otherwise the DS won't boot up. Now that the front part of the macro is prepared we need to prepare the rear half with my new clear shell. So to do this I'm going to take off its protective film from all areas including the game cartridge shielding area. Not only that but I need the nuts in place for the battery cover and I need the volume and power sliders to be put in. I'm chosen white to match with my white buttons. And finally the dust cover for the Game Boy Advance case just putting in the screw with that rear half all prepared. We now attach it to the Game Boy Macro making sure that the volume slider and the power slider matches with the connectors on board. Try not to force this down if they're not matched. Make sure they are matched and you won't cause any damage. With that matched up and in place I will now put in all the screws that provided by Boxy Pixel that screw into their faceplate. Now with that all into place we can insert the battery, put the battery cover back on and screw it down. Now the moment of truth this is a good time to test it and hopefully everything should turn on. And that took a lot longer than I thought it would. That's probably because after having the battery removed, it goes to this screen rather than the home screen. Now that we know that works, I'm going to install a Game Boy Macro glass screen. I'll definitely recommend picking one of these up if you're unsure because it gives the build a very nice finish. So before we go to stick it into place, I'm just going to clean up any dust and marks. As for the screen itself, it has two protective layers. I start with the rear one, I then peel it off and then peel off the 3M adhesive layer which would reveal the adhesive itself. Then we can stick this into place onto the Game Boy Macro and then we can remove the final protective layer once that's in place. You want to try and center this best as possible but it doesn't completely cover all of the gaps. I then only apply pressure to the outside of the Game Boy Macro and not on the screen itself. And there we have it, the final build. The sound is good, the finish is good and it does look really nice. Comparing it to the Game Boy Micro which is probably its counterpart, it's about the same price but it is thicker and it comes with a tiny tiny screen. While its form factor is a lot thinner than a traditional macro. The only issue as you've probably seen is the LED doesn't look that good. I've seen people use glue as a light diffuser. I want to find a solution without glue. The only other complaint would be that the Game Boy cartridges themselves do pop out kind of ruins the look of the Game Boy Macro. My final thoughts on this Game Boy Macro is that it truly is becoming the ultimate build. This mod has been perfected over the years. The only thing that could really top this is a full aluminium case and not just the front half. I think it is reasonably priced and it's pretty straightforward to do. Now technically this is part of my Trash to Cash series because I did buy a faulty macro in the intention to repair it but it turns out it did not need to be repaired hence why I've done all this modification to it. But for those still interested, if I was to do a price breakdown, the cost of this mod and the work that's been involved, I would basically break even and I wouldn't worry about it. However, I'm interested on your thoughts on this Game Boy Macro mod and the Game Boy Macro in general. 